What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and despite what you see in your background, we're going to be talking about the application which is called BootP. Now BootP is something which comes with your installation of Rockwell Automation Tools and it allows you to essentially uh, set the IP address of any of your devices. So this could be anything from a controller, a PLC, a drive such as the PowerFlex 525. It could also be a Kinetics drive, uh, 350 family, for example. It could be all sorts of different devices which communicate over Ethernet. Now, BootP has been somewhat of a controversial tool, um, and I guess I'm not going to get into that debate too much, but I want to show you exactly how to use this uh, particular tool on the way um, some of the tips that I have to give about it. So the first thing that you're going to see is depending on your setup, of course, on your laptop or desktop computer is you're going to be asked which uh, connection you want to use. So this, depending on um, again, how many Ethernet ports, if you have virtual machines that are running, if you have a wireless connection to your PLC, you need to select the right adapter. So in my case, this is going to be this Realtek USB family controller. I'm going to hit on OK. And what I'm going to see is this commissioning tool from Boot P. There's going to be a couple of options, but essentially what you need to uh, primarily be concerned about is the network settings. So typically I want to be on the IP address, uh, on the final IP address of which I want the device to be. So of course a device which comes out of the box, uh, at least for Rockwell, does not have a designated IP address. And the whole process of getting Boot P up and ready and going is to give you your newly acquired device and IP address. So what's going to happen is uh, after a little bit of time, so this can take from anywhere from one minute to five minutes, you will start device. So you will start seeing different devices appear. And the way you know uh, which device is yours, so first of all, you have the MAC address, which you can of course look on the back of your device. You'll have a label with the MAC address, but you'll also have this uh, boot P uh, label for each one of your Rockwell devices. So boot P is proprietary to Alan Bradley or Rockwell Automation, and it will uh, display here. And that's how you know that Boot P is enabled on that device. In terms of hardware connections, I would highly recommend that you connect directly from your computer to the device instead of going through, you know, a switch where you have multiple devices, maybe a plant network. So that's definitely a very, very important tip. But how do you set the IP address? So if you double click this device, you will notice that. So your server IP address, that's the IP address of your computer which is actually really quickly just to show you um, if you do need to change that you of course navigate to your control panel and uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, I guess basic operations of Windows let's try that again control panel control panel click on that and it should open your control panel in just a second here if you go into network and sharing center you can click that once and then you will be like that once. Uh, I guess I opened two uh, two windows because it took a while to load, so I had to, um, I guess, be a little bit more patient. But if you go here, change adapter settings, and you should be able to see both of your adapters. In my case, it's this Ethernet 2. If I double click here, I can go into properties, go into IP version 4 address. That is a very small window. I don't know how that's going to work. It's because I'm working on a retina display. But in any case, that's the IP address 192.168.1.200. Hit OK, hit OK, and you should be all set. Now let's go back to boot P. So now you have the option to set the IP address for your device. Now here's the client IP address. So I'm going to set that 192.168.1.4, uh, for example. So if I set this to 4, uh, you can give it a host name and description as well. That is optional. Hit OK. And what you will see is that this device is going to appear on the bottom window. And what you will often notice is that it will tell you that unable to service boot peer request from this particular device. Uh, just ignore that. In my, uh, I guess, experience, this has never been a, re a real problem, even though it gives you an error. Now, what you also need to do is once you see, so first of all, you see that this IP address has been set on that device. What you need to do is select this device and hit this disable boot P. And you will notice that we did send this uh, request to that device and it should uh, usually take. And I click this a couple of times and uh, usually it works, but you don't really get an acknowledgement that it did work. So here's the other thing that you also need to do. So since this device is a, uh, it's a Micrologix 1100, PLC and you can't necessarily tell that from here, what you need to do is go into your RS Links configuration. 
All right, so once in RS Links, you will notice that you will see the device in the tree. So of course, if you're browsing the local subnet, you should see it appear and there's going to be no errors like this X above. What you can do um, more often than that, if you have a newer device, is that you will see a um, separate tab which will allow you to configure the IP address directly once you've set it through uh, boot P. So for example, on this uh, compact, compact logics processor, what I can do is go into this module configuration and go into port configuration and you will notice that there's going to be a, um, I guess, a radio button which allows the IP address to be obtained through boot P. And of course, you want this disabled, you want to manually configure your IP settings. And of course, in some rare occasions, although I've never seen this, you can definitely use a DHCP. However, this is where this would live. That being said, for a Micrologix 1100 series, you don't have this luxury. So if you right click, you will notice that there's going to be no module configuration tab. So how do you get the setting for boot P? Because like I mentioned before, sometimes that disabled boot P button does not always work in boot P for one reason or another. So what you need to do is go into your RSLogix 500 software, go into system comms, and here you browse down to your PLC. So of course, as you remember, it's going to be the dot four micrologic series. And you can, of course, since uh, you may or may not have a copy of that software, which is running on the processor, more often you will not because this is going to be a new installation, you are going to have to go online with it. And here I'm going to just create a new file, which doesn't matter, of course, the name. And as you can see, I'm online with the processor. That being said, what you need to do is look at this channel configuration, you can double click this. And if you go into channel one, this is going to be your ethernet uh, port. Now, depending on what kind of uh, a processor you're running, the, of course, this could be different depending if you have RS-232, if you have 485, so on and so forth. But there will be a channel which is the ethernet channel. And in this case, you will notice that boot P is still enabled. And the problem with boot P being enabled is that once the processor essentially goes down or loses power or anything happens, it will revert back to that boot P setting. And by reverting back to the boot P setting, you will notice is that the processor actually lost its IP address. So you'll have to go all over um, and reset it up again. So what you need to do is disable this boot P, disable the HCP, of course, and make sure that the IP address is correct. So from here, you can also change the IP address if you want to put it on a different network uh, or if, for example, you're programming locally, but once you deploy it on your control system, it is going to change. Um, of course, all the other settings are explained in the manual, but this is extremely important. Disable this boot P uh, setting as well as this DHCP enable. Hit apply. It, I believe it will tell you that uh, loss of communication may occur. Of course, if you haven't changed the IP, that should not happen. Hit apply. Hit OK. And now you have a fully functional Micrologix 1100, which you set up through boot P. And just like any other device, uh, these are the steps to follow. Like I said, a couple of watch outs. So first of all, you definitely want to wait on your boot P settings because sometimes it takes a minute, sometimes it takes five. That's just the nature of the beast. And you always want to disa disable the boot P setting at, after you've set your final IP address. Otherwise, when the device loses power in the field or any blimp happens, it will revert back to that uh, setting where it's looking for a host to give it an IP address. So definitely watch out for that. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.